Hello everyone. We have a scooter here. Um, might be even in the category of cheap Chinese scooter. That's the um, Turbo 36cc EX gas scooter. I got this for $20 and I want to try to uh, see if we can get it running. Put it back together. It's missing lots of parts. It's extra challenging. Got some wiring issues. Yep. And uh, let's see, we have a, like a 12 volt battery that runs these lights. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry about that. Have a 12 volt battery here. I run some lights. I doubt it has a alternator, so I'm assuming that you charge that frequently. And then we have, uh, it's got to be two-stroke engine here. It looks like it to me. We have a missing pull start. Exhaust cover. Oops, very brittle plastic here to protect you from burying yourself in the engine. Uh, missing cover for the uh, carburetor. Carburetor just a screw. Fuel tank here. The seat post I have, that's good. Wheels, chain. We can get in. Uh, looks like some gear fluid right here, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about this thing, you know, and uh, I'm gonna fix it. I don't expect to make money from it. I, you know, I just want to ride it. It's probably gonna take a little longer than I expect, but whatever. Worst case scenario is uh, we gotta replace this entire engine if the components. It's just too much, you know, such as like, if I, if I can't find them too, you know, it's just not worth it. So finding the parts is going to be a little tricky because, you know, I have to figure out what the, the, the names of stuff, you know, this looks like an electric start because of that. So I'm assuming electric and pull starts right here and they're going to miss and pull start. It's like someone was working on it and they just left it off. Silly me when I bought it, I should have been more vigil, but whatever. Here we are. I'm owning it. My fault. So we had a missing. This is very brittle fuel line. Yeah. All right. You ready to do this? Because this is commitment right now. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's see uh, what we have for an engine condition before we start to mess with anything else. <laughs> That's already loose. How about that? Okay, the so spark plug looks pretty clean. Some corrosion here at the end. Hmm. I want to look inside of there and see what we have. So we need to look inside of this. Let's see what we're working with here. Let's see how well this goes. Oh man. Got a lot of carbon there, don't we? So we can turn this down. Well, I can tell you now, I've seen some bad pistons in my life. And this one doesn't seem to be the worst. Oh, there we go, I'm getting a much better view. Okay, I don't see any typical huge scoring. Alright, I do think I need to pull it apart though to get a better assessment. Yeah, I see a lot of carbon buildup, so. 
This will have to be cleaned either way. Anyway, we need to figure out what engine this is and what kind of parts we can find for this, you know what I mean? So let's uh let's continue down that route. has a, a wire that's connected to like the magneto. I want to see if I can slide that off. in there. This gas tank's in my way. Yeah. This looks too... PB Blaster, not a sponsor. We have a, like five bolts, I think, to get, to get this engine free. That's one. That's the other one right there. That's two. And then over here, we have this one here. And another over there. That one right there. And down here, we have this here. And we have another... Uh, the one right there at the bottom. So, it's right there. So. Before we go any further, now would be a good time to see if we have any spark. Just out of curiosity, you know? So I got a nut and then turn it to the right. It's a 12 millimeter. Oh, we have spark. Yeah. I'll show you. So this is all pretty strange. Um, and I turned it clockwise, kind of clockwise. Upon closer inspection, these are not reverse threaded. This this is, you know, righty tightsy. But this nut's now super loose. So I don't know if I just damaged it. It just doesn't seem to do anything anymore. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, what do we do now? Yeah. No. See, that looked like that just got tighter, didn't it? 
Nope, it does not. All right. We might have had a casualty of war. Oh well, whatever. Let's see if we can get this nut off. A little screwdriver underneath it. Yeah, sometimes you can give it a little back pressure and uh, I can get it off that way. Hmm. It's definitely coming off. I think an impact would be a little bit more helpful. Hmm. I need to stuff something in that uh, Can't hurt, try to, can't lose, just trying to fix it even if you break something, you know? Either way, you just get a new uh, motor, I guess. Or you don't beat yourself up too badly. I messed it up! It's okay. Well, let's see how bad those threads are, shall we? Lots of metal there. Uh, hmm. Looks like it might not be the happiest ever. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Yep. So these threads don't look great, but I don't know. It looks like it's a part of maybe maybe it's a part of this pull start electric start assembly. I, I don't know, but I think we should try to disconnect it. Let's see what we get. It's just kind of soldered onto there. Nope. Uh, that just kind of broke right off. All right. I'm not doing well here, am I? Okay. Let's just come off. So look at that. We got some numbers. Oh. Blind you. But do you see that? That uh, says. Oh boy. Maybe that'll work. No, maybe not. Hold on. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So yeah, that's 1E36 letter. F, 1E36F, right? That's written on the uh, engine. Look at this. I type that into Google, right? And I find this. So we are on to something. Maybe, maybe we should just explore this, see what we get, and then maybe the cost of just getting a new engine may be less than trying to find the parts for this. So, yeah, maybe that's the way to go. So it's been a couple of weeks since I started this project, and I want to show you some things I've learned. <clears throat> My fancy pointer. All right, so I've noticed that, okay, here we, there's a couple engines online for this. I, I was never really committed to keeping this engine because it was just, you know, you saw it damaged, that electric pull start and everything, I don't know, you know, it's all, I don't know if I can buy that separately, either way, right? Here we go. So, we have 
electric pull start with a manual pull start on top of it that's missing, right? So that, I can't even find that part. Pull start cover, I don't know, whatever. Uh, electric starts here. We have the engine here, muffler, right? This is pretty much where the engine begins and ends, right there. Sorry, from here to here. Over here is the transmission, right? And this here is a mountain plate. Now, the engines that I see online looks like you, a couple, they come in a couple, for, um, couple uh, designs. I mean, uh, parts. I, I don't know, whatever. You can get it with manual uh, pull start only, or you can get it just like this, manual with the uh, electric starter. I'm thinking I'm going to go that route just because I would like to try to restore this, you know? I'm not committed to that, but I would like to. And then over here, this transmission, I don't really know much about it, you know? I have to count how many teeth there is on the sprocket. You know, these are important things because it looks like I need to know that also. So, I'm going to remove this from the, well, just the whole thing from this right here. And then we'll look at, look at this and see what we can find online in regards to, uh, you know, what makes sense. Yeah, I gave up. Let's just get this engine off. So this seems to be like a number four. Yeah, it's number four. Looks like that. Let's pop this off. We got a, I'm sorry, the bracket. We have two 8 mil bolts here. This one. And the last one's right here. Alright. Engine is. Alright, so they're, they're two different sizes. And the longer one was in the back. Here. Longer one here, it's that one, shorter one, shorter one here, it's up front. Found the right tool for the job. Oh, there we go. Really got to push. Okay. Oops. So now we have this. Now this is interesting, right? Because it's soldered on right here. Right? And I don't know if this is kind of like pulls right out or not. You know? It's soldered on and insulated. That's for a reason. You have Captain Fabulous, Destructive Fabulous right here trying to yank on it. Then the other alternative is to like chase this over here to this. Is where this pink wire goes into. Now that does not look factory. Okay, let's take it off. Let's see what someone else is trying to do or not. 
At least they try to make it look sexy. Yeah. Make it black. Black like me. Pre-2021. Black Lives Matter. Anyway, let's see. So, oh, well, there you go. Well, that's how that works. And I wonder what this does. If you know, let me know. So we get a 10 millimeter top of there. But before we take off, let's mark it so we can remember for the future. I guess I did pull this insert it. Well, let's do it right now. Right, let's... There you go. Man, that's pretty vague. I do not know what that does. There's no markings on it. So it looks like it gets a signal from here. I think it closes a circuit. That's what it looks like to me. So this is some sort of a signal wire would come in from here. Oh, okay. It goes up to the key, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so either way, this is free. I'm going to go uh, look and see and measure stuff and see what we're working with. Alright, so, uh, you know, I went to my, uh, is it a transponder? No. What's the thing you use in Star Trek to make stuff? Well, anyway, went to it, I got this, and it should be an exact replacement for that. No. You can see that uh, this gear is a little bit on the bigger side compared to this one. So I'll probably have to remove that. And then... Got a, it's got a whole lot of extra stuff. Or different stuff. You know? This would be for the start. Electric start, yeah. And then we have just different connectors coming out of this, so... That's not an issue. Probably have to, like, cut something and solder some stuff on, just to keep this pigtail. Uh... Alright. Has something to do with the spark, that's all I can tell you. Alright. We'll figure it out when we get there. Right, let's get this snap ring off. Because we want to reuse this gear. Okay, so we have a snap ring. Is there a washer? Okay, just kind of fits on that. Hopefully it'll fit the other one. So when I bought this, I thought it said it came with multiple um, gears, like three of them, but I don't see it, so I'm assuming, like, uh, this is it, you know? So let's uh, just switch this out. Uh, it looks like a different size snap ring, doesn't it? Mm. Finding other ones that you couldn't find. And I go, oh, that's. Uh, I was looking for this like uh, 3M 
uh, white, like, uh, I guess it's a rollock pad, they call it. For three days. No luck. Ten minutes into looking for this, and I found it. Craziness. Gonna fight me. Yeah, I can feel it already. Alright, that's a good start. Um, what do we need there? Pliers, screwdriver. Yeah. screwdriver. Yeah, we didn't lose it. Okay. Right, so that should just come. Yep, yeah, that does come off. Does, it, does that fit? Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It looks the same. There you go. All right. So that slides kind of deep. All right. We're good. Pretty sure we're good. I want to pull this uh, cover off because this magneto here, just to avoid us like uh, avoid us like you know having to do a lot of um, shenanigans with. that by the way with the harness like you know cutting a harness up to make it match because this is not the same as the one that's on the the old one so we can probably just take the old magneto off see if see if it works first you know so I just want to get some of these covers off all right this thing is so different from the other one. It's a little shorter. Okay. You can probably just keep that here for now, like that. And how did that go? Just like this. That's right. Okay. Nope, that's not gonna work. That will work. So it's that. That happens to be the same size as the other one. Bronze colored one. Right down here. Well, might be able to slip it under there. What do you think? Pull that off. Black is on top of the red. This looks like it kind of slips in underneath here. Yeah, there you go. 
Alright, so. I'll push this through there. Okay. Okay, so. This magneto is what I want. I might want to switch that out with the other one. Let's just check this engine, make sure we have spark before we move on. Three fourths. Three fourths inch. Looks like it's actually 16 millimeters, but whatever. ZKDL BM6A. That's a spark plug that's on it, if you want to know. Why did I do that? I could have just left that in there and used my spark tester. Never mind. Silly me. Okay, there we go. So, one of these is a kill switch. You know, it grounds out the uh, magneto. Let's look for spark. Yep, nice and bright. That's so strong. All right, we got a good spark. All right, so we need to try to get this air gap between the magneto here flywheel, but I don't know what it is, so let's see what we think it is. Usually it's just the, the width of a business card, you know, which is like 0 .008 maybe inches. Okay. Point zero eleven. It's getting there. 12. It's getting there. 13. It's getting there. 14. Let's get a 17. I don't know about that. That air gap is pretty big. thinking. Let's go 24 thousandths. Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty big air gap. 22 thousandths. So 21 kind of slips in there. Kind of. Alright, how about. Let's go 20 thousandths. Or two hundredths. It's a little tight. But I like it. Okay, let's check this side. Hmm. Nope. That's, so it's wider over there. Alright, so it's not actually even machine put together properly. Oh, these. Oh. Okay, you know what? We're gonna have to, like, uh, find an ear gap for this. So, this is what I'm gonna use this uh, gap right here. This one's a little off on that side. And it looks like a nine thousandths of an inch is uh, is the money for this one so it's, it's got a nice bit of drag on it not too too bad it's pretty good okay um, here's the thing I noticed that this is actually a little bit bigger the piston at the top here this is a much wider piston top I don't know in you know, the engine fits uh, it's a little bit bigger than this one 
just girthier, but it, it does bolt up the same. My question is, though, is like, I'm looking at these two magnetos, and uh, I do believe that, 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 uh, that this magneto here, let's see, so one from here to here, that's about the bolt pattern. Yeah, that's not the same. So we're going to have to leave that alone. Um, and if I want to tie this back into the harness, I'm going to have to like uh, adapt onto this right here. Yeah, there's just no really other way around it. Yeah. All right. Well, in the meantime, I want to. I do want to fix this. This is bothering me because uh, this air gap over here is huge. That one's really narrow, so it's like you know, we're gonna make them the same. All right. So upon closer examination, this is definitely a, a much more beefier engine. It's a bit of an upgrade. So we're gonna do. So here we go. Like a while ago, right? I always wondered why this feeler gauge did this bronze point one point zero one. I'm sorry, just one hundredth of an inch feeler gauge. It's also uh, 25 millimeter. It's equivalent. I always wondered why, you know? And I have a feeling that's pretty uh, like a standard air gap you run into, you know? That's what, that's what I think that, 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 that is. So we're going to do that. We're going to set it to that bronze. We're, you know, I set it to 0.9, but we're going to do a uh, different different measurement. Okay. So we're gonna slide that up. So on this, we have to remove some bolts. And uh, if you look right here, it's these two are the ones that we use to mount to the engine. So. We're going to have to uh, pop that out, pop that out, and we're going to bolt up to the engine using these two back here. And then these two are already, uh, they're already out. So these are 8 millimeters. Again, you have a long and a short one. Long ones from here, short ones over there. Hope this fits. Okay, so these line up. They line up in the front here. It's a little bit off on the back over here. It's just just a shy too thick. So right here, just a little too. Oops, sorry. It's just a little, just a little too thick. But I wonder if it's if it's bumping up against that. You know. No, that's pretty good. My clearance there. It's really just that. <sighs> hmm. Well, that's annoying. That is really annoying. Right, I'll think about it. All right, so uh, I measured a lot of stuff on this side over here where the transmission is, gearbox. And uh, everything's the same, right? But if you look closely, right? So these two bolts here are the ones that hold onto the uh, bracket. So the distance from here to here 
It is, uh, it's around 66.39 millimeters. And do the same thing over here. Right? You notice that that's as far as I go. So I am... This is thicker right here. I mean, you can see it, but it's definitely thicker, you know? Huh. So, what are we gonna do? Let's see how much we got. Okay, 72.4. Four millimeters. Okay, so from here to here, 72.44. We just need just a little bit more, don't we? Just a little bit. Yeah. Alright, well, there you go. Uh, gotta think about how we're gonna do this. There's one, one solution I thought about with the bracket. I was thinking maybe we could just probably cut down like that. Down like that. And then this will slide in. You know? My only issue is it's not gonna be really stable. Because as soon as you start using this, you know, it gets a lot of like pulling action. And this is a much bigger engine, so. Hmm. And you can tighten it down, but. But, uh, you know, but so much is what you're going to get. I fear we're going to have to try to actually weld something out to here and up. Just to give it a little bit more room, a little more clearance. That's what I'm thinking right now. So, there you go. Alright, so here's the plan. We're going to replicate the same template here. It's two inches in height and I don't know in width. But anyway, so I got this piece of flat iron and we're going to make that template. Then we're going to use a washer in between to space it just a little bit. I'm going to drop down two holes, cut this out, and then with the offset, this should be able to slide down and bolt in through this. Cool. I used to have a guard for this to kind of, not a guard, but a guide. I really wish I could find it. It's cut in oil. It's gonna help. 
pop this out. No, I can't even find the hole. It's great. I've done was incrementally went up in, s in diameter. I had to turn the RPMs down on the uh, trail press. And uh, we're almost there. We should be like about the right size because I need to like create a hole to pivot so we can use a saw in there. bad, right? I like it to be more precise, but, you know, it is what it is. We're working with what we got. There you go. Cool. We should mark the holes and drill them out. So at this point, I'm going to label these right and left. So this is the right side. side
Round two, fight. Let's see how this goes. Is there a moment of truth, the moment we've been waiting for? Let's see how precise these are. Nice. Not bad, right? Yeah, I think we got ourselves a winner. What do you think? That's the fastener we're going to use, so we use these socket cap screws, quarter inch by 20 by 3 fourths inch in length, and uh, I wanted to stay with metric because this was Chinese, but it didn't have a, a nut for me, so. So now, right, what I'm thinking is we can put a pipe, like a washer, in between here to get just that little bit of space we need. You know? We should be able to just... I don't want to cut it off in the back, but we're just going to cut down just to create a space for the, uh, the engine to, like, drop into that groove. Engine all set up. Everything's kind of loose. I'm gonna leave it loose because it's hard to get everything lined up perfectly. Okay, and same thing over here. Keep everything kind of loose. Oops. All right, so that's loose. That's loose. 
I just want to do that because it'll be easier to tighten everything down. Just, I mean, to catch the bolts and to make sure everything sits in a hole and you're not stripping anything. Okay. So I'm having a little bit of an issue catching the chain on the sprocket, so I have a feeling I'm going to take, take uh, the bolts off that's holding. You know, holding the engine on, just to give me a little bit, a little bit of wiggle room, so I can get this on. Yeah, I can't, I can't really. Yeah, I just have to do that, loosen it up, and then slide that on, and then we'll go from there. We gotta get this cover off so we can get this throttle back on. Carburetor cover has one bolt holding it on. And you'll know it's side because it has uh, on and off written right here. How to put it back on. Okay. So this thing. Yep. Looks like it has its own setup right here. Interesting. Okay, so that goes like that. You can't see. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. What I was saying is uh, this is going to be your idle screw. And it looks like it just wants to be fed through there. So we need to feed because all this here is going to be what that is. So we pull that off. Spring here. Take that off. Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. Feed that through. So this does have a nut on it. has to, doesn't it? Hmm. So I don't know how it's gonna it needs to have a something on this side here for resistance. But there's what is that? It's like something in the way there. Oh boy, gotta think about this. Alright, so it looks like this is a little bit of a different design. It doesn't use that nut on that side. And uh, so when I go like this, that works. <laughs> um, I don't even know if I, the spring even makes sense. You know? Yeah, I don't think so. Because I think it just kind of rebounds on its own. Yeah, I'm going to leave it alone, okay, so no spring, and this nut here, oh, will you come off, oh, there, that nut doesn't seem to be of any use, the design here is a little different, so, I mean, it works, it rebounds, because there's a spring inside the carburetor and it's got full range of motion. Alright, so that's it. We're good. Slee.
got the darn thing. Kind of need you to not be struck too. Okay, so that's that. We need to. Alright, so this electrical stuff is. is a bit of a nightmare. You know? Yeah, um, I do want to test this. But we need to figure out a way to like kill kill spark, you know. So we we'll do something with this to kill the spark. Otherwise, we'll have an engine that won't shut off, and that's just about all. But so much fun. So we gotta ground it out somehow. So remember uh, the starter. Kind of mark this. There you go, that mark there. So that should be what this needs, electrically anyway, to work. I think this is called a starter relay. That's what it is. Yeah. Not really sure the best. So I do want to lubricate this top end a little bit, and uh, to do that we're going to do use a little Marvel Mystery Oil, not a sponsor. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this because the engine is never, um, you know, it's a brand new engine. So. This engine is 25 to 1. Yeah, it's a 25 to 1 mixture, so. So, let's check and see. We got spark. Look right here. <laughs> got a lot of compression. starter here cause something to ground out. Hmm. If it did, that would be nice because that'll uh, actually be how we can ground it out. Just touch it here. Shut this off. Make sure that's connected. That's connected. Look right here. Warning. Stuff's gonna go fly. Put it back. Lame. I just wasn't pulling fast enough. Yeah, that's what it was. I 
Something has to ground out for us to like kill spark, you know. Let's, let's see what we do. Nope, we're good. Still have spark. All right, it's a good thing. So leave that alone. One of these here, we have to figure out what to do with one of these. Probably the black one, maybe. Alright, so what if we took this black cable here and uh, grinded ourselves out to the chassis? What if that will uh, disable spark? It's kind of guessing here, to be honest with you. Let's watch right there. Nope. Got a lot of spark. So that's not going to work. Is it the red one? What do you think? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I guess I saw a little bit of a spark. Nope. Yep. That's the red one. Okay. Alright, so. Red one to the chassis. Okay, that will kill it. All right, that's good to know. So that's solved. We need to put some uh, gear oil in there. At least check it. I don't think it has any. I think it comes sans gear oil. Hearing the snap, the click. All right, I guess it's fine. Okay, so let's get some gear oil in there. At least check anyway. Blow the power of Frisco. Oh, by the way, we're using a Lucas's uh, SA. W90 gear oil. Not a sponsor. Alright, so you know, just keep doing that till it over overfills and then you close it up. Okay. So that's tight. And uh, we gotta adjust the displacement on the chain from the front front sprocket to the back sprocket needs to increase in distance. This is too floppy. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose either. So we gotta loosen that up. That's, a, that's a, an eight. Alright. Hmm. Feels like reverse threaded or something. Alright, so I loosened up uh, this bolt and this bolt over here, and uh, the chain will get. We can tighten the chain using this 10 millimeter wrench right here. And what that will do is uh, kind of like pull the, ch the wheels back. Yeah, we want to do it symmetrically. So we're going to do a little over there, a little bit over here. Just want to keep things symmetrical. Alright, so that, that's a good bit of tension on the chain. You don't want to go much more than that because it'll, it'll burn up the chain. But if you go too little, it'll burn up the chain also. So you kind of like have to get a feel for it. So that looks about right. 
Yeah. All right, so we can do that. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna lock it down. So, can tighten this up. Tighten up this side again here. Tight. All right, so as I was trying to tighten this, I realized that that is all the way through to here. So you got to hold on to this while you tighten it down. So you're going to get two, two tools, yeah, like that. One there, one there, righty tightsy. All right, so let's uh, let's look at the brakes for a second here. Um, so we, the wheel itself uh, kind of turns. Let's see, right, but, uh, I'm gonna press the brake. There's some drag, but you can still turn it, you know. And it's pressed all the way. Let's see, right there. So I think we gotta. This is first off. Let me just point this out. I, I don't know if this is bent, but I know this looks a little wonky. It's like kicked this way. That's not factory. I don't know what was what's happening here or what was meant to be, you know. Um, uh, let's, just, let's just try to tighten this up and see uh, see if uh, that we get any, any, any more um, Take some slack out the cable. I think that's what this should do. I don't know. So we do have some drag. I do at one point need to open this all up and uh, just get a feel for what's going on back there. Yeah. So it took some time to clean up this tank and uh, you can see it cleans up quite nicely. Uh, but we have some petrified... Um, yeah, although just, they're just, they barely bend. So let's see, when I look inside you can't see, but the black one is the one with the fuel filter on it. Doesn't really matter, but just in case you wanted to know. So I want to get this is like a kind of a like a grommet of some sort. Well, let's pull this off. That with these. Okay. And I'll just reach in there and grab the lines. This will be the return line. Petrified doesn't even. So we can squeeze it down a little. Alright, so. That's ridiculous. Um, well, that just broke right off. Oh, that's convenient. Let's pull it out of here. All right, so that's our fuel filter. And uh, now I have fuel lines, but my issue is uh, one of them is a little bit tight. 
on this carburetor. Okay, um, so we are probably not going to be able to use it with confidence. And I need to use it with confidence. You know, I don't know. Let me think about a strategy here for a second. Okay, so here is my issue. Right, this is fine. This one here, it's a little bit of a wider diameter. And what's happening is uh, I am struggling to get this fuel line on, right? And this is the fuel line I have. It's a fairly generic size. I'm sorry. So we're going to do the uh, hot water tray, right? So back you off a little bit. So I have this. It's some warm water. Warm tap water. Right, we're going to just kind of like sit it in here for a second or two. Well, about a minute. Well, or less. I don't know. Whatever. Let's just see what happens, right? I just want to make it a little bit more pliable and then I try to slide it on. If that works, right, then we know we have a good proof of concept and uh, we can move forward with uh, rather than plumbing the, this, uh, these um, fuel lines. Yeah. So here we go. And that's enough time? I don't know. Let's see. Zoom you back in. You might not see too much. I have a feeling it might be in your way. But that's okay. We like being close. We know each other. I'm not saying I like it or you don't like it. I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is. Okay, come on. The other option is to use a heat gun. Kind of like when they heat this up. Or just get a fuel line that will work better. That's... that's <laughs> yep, that's what I thought. Now, this is a common problem when you uh, start to work on small engines. You've never seen a new carburetor. You need to figure out which one's going to be the line that comes in. So the one that sucks in, it's going to be the one that has the fuel filter on it, right? So how do you find out? In this situation, right, you have a, a primer bulb here, right? So you want to press that and see which one sucks. Okay, that pushes out. Say so I pushed on it, listen. Right, so air pressure built up in there. This one goes up. This is going to be a return. That's going to be the one that sucks fuels in, suck fuel in. So this one, this is going to have the fuel filter on it. That's how you can tell. All right, so we're going to try this hot water trick again. I had to sit in in water for a much longer time. It's much softer now. Let's see if they can somewhat get it on there. One of the reasons why I want to try to get this to work, the a bigger line's gonna fight me with getting through that grommet. There we go. Come on. You're doing good. Come on, keep going. Keep going. The hot water really makes this so much softer. Right? Okay, there we go. So that's pretty good. It worked out pretty well. Yeah, this should uh, this should hold what'll happen as it cools down. It's going to uh, squeeze. 
and get an even tighter seal. So, we're good. So we got to put a fuel filter on this. Hopefully that's enough line to kind of flop around inside of the tank instead of the bottom. All right, so put the return line on. Don't cut it yet, though. Just want to put it on. Just to make sure we got a, a good uh, good length. Return line. I try to give you a little bit of a wider view. So. tank sits uh, right here, like that. Right. This, this is the most important line. This has to be able to be inside of here. Right. And sit down inside, inside the bottom of the tank, somehow. Because fuel sits down there at the bottom of this tank. Alright, so we need to throw a fuel filter on here. Alright, so right away we have a problem. This is just not enough fuel line. Even if we. Actually, no, it's good. Yeah. If we route it this way, we actually get the, the fuel filter will be able to get to it. I don't know if it's the most elegant solution, but okay, so we're good, right? So we're gonna use this, we're committed to this, right? So we're gonna go fuel filter here, looks like this. Pretty much I, at this moment, I don't see an issue with uh, using just about any fuel filter you can get that goes on the end of a fuel fuel line. I can't really see an issue with uh, using any one you can get your hands on. Uh, it's not like if it's uh, it stymies the flow of fuel enough. None of these like smaller engines to really make it an issue, you know. Okay, so that's that, right? So we're good with that. We'll just put that over there. And then this return line, right? This is a longer line. I didn't pre-cut these, just so you know, I just had them. I usually don't pre-cut it until I'm sure that uh, the length makes sense. Okay. Right, so right around here. money right there. Going once, going twice. Done. Alright, if you have commitment issues, you're screwed. Alright, so we're going to have to take this fuel filter off because the um, So we have to slide this through the, uh, the grommet back here. Now, these can be a bit of a challenge to do. I'm going to kind of like cut it on an angle. You know what? Myself. Does it feel awkward? 
like that, right? I'm going to kind of cut them on an angle. This is going to assist you with uh, getting the wine itself into the uh, through the grommet. Oh yeah, that's that's great. That's a good cut. Sure, I'm cutting that. I'm gonna cut it down here. So something like that. Yeah. All right. So we want to go through the hole. That might be a problem, right? So what you do? Some silicone spray. Some silicone spray. Just kind of spray those two holes there. Come on. All right. I usually kind of work this in. Work it. Girl, hey, work it. And then at some point, you're going to need to kind of grab it. Grab and pull. Yep, just. Easy peasy. Oh yeah. So easy. Not long enough. I can tell you how many times in life I've heard that one. Alright. And I'm ready for war. work. Uh, pull this through some. Okay, now did I forget to put yes I did. This oh the spring I forgot to put the spring on. It looked like that. A kind of large You just screw into this uh, welded nut onto the back of this. That gas tank crisis averted. Not sure if you can see, but the fuel filter is right there at the bottom, sitting in the tank. That's what you want to make sure that it has enough room to sit at the bottom of the tank. So this has a cover right here. 
has to go here. There's three bolts that hold it in place, but I don't have those bolts, right? So I've got my own little hoard right here. Must be one reference. And uh, I have to find three bolts. So I think these bolts here, they look like they're M6s, by the way. All right. These are from my Honda Fender. So that's what these are. These are from my Honda Fender. Those actually work over there. So. Yeah, that's perfect. So they are from a 1997 Honda Civic Green, hence the color. And uh, lucky me, I have three of them. So washers too on top of that so all is well let's try to get this cover on but to get this cover on uh show you. we gotta do something with this stuff yeah, right so it looks like it goes like, what under here yeah let me like through here like that something like that This looks like it got rubbed off, so not really sure. Oh, that'll do. Okay. I'm assuming that well, the battery goes in there with all the wires and stuff. So I'm just going to try to push that down. We're going to have to come back to this project at a later point because for now I need to ride this thing, use it as my transportation, you know, and uh, I'll fix the electronics at some other point later time. Let's just get this all set up so I can use it with the pull start pretty later on at that point too. Yeah, yeah look at it. So at one point it uh, looks like got some corrosion happening here. And uh, down inside of here is uh, you can see it's <laughs> this cavity of seen better days. So we are going to want to fix that. Well Permanent fix would be uh, to uh, sand it out of some sort. You know, maybe put some uh, rust remover and then rust inhibitor in here. But for now, we're gonna just kind of like pack some grease right around here to try to create a grease water barrier. So I realize uh, this cover here goes on. It's got a lot of electrical connectors. It sits on top of this, right? But this doesn't line up well with it. So when I put that on, right, it's like the hole for this is just like too far forward. So I'm wondering if, uh, you know, what could have happened for itself. Like, I mean, I'm surprised this actually fits here because, you know, this is a little bit of a bigger engine. But yeah, it fits well. Just this is off. So I need to, like, pull it back some. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need to kind of, like, slide that back. I don't think it was ever bent, but I don't know. I mean, well, it could have been, obviously, because it doesn't line up, right? All right, I'm confused. I'll think about it. No, I already know what I got to do. I'm gonna slide that back.
There you go, that's perfect. Yeah, that's what I needed. Just that little extra. It looks like there's some sort of like connect something that uh, was around this seat here to kind of clamp things down. Uh, I don't know what I, I, I didn't I never got it. So what I will do I'm gonna have to uh, find a solution just to help keep that seat in place. We'll do that. Uh, We'll do that later. So this is a height adjuster. And the pole, this pole here on the inside, should slide up and, and down. But as you can tell, whatever you get is what you get with this thing. Alright, so I think we should just kind of like spray some uh, lubricant in there. And let it sit. So we'll use some... Uh, be blast. Be blaster, not a sponsor. I'll just uh oh hey. Just let it sit for a little bit. So I changed the bolt to one of those bolts that have like uh like a little bit of a a thick part up top. Seems like that fits better right in here. So it's like a better fit. And uh, we need to do something with these wires. So uh, see how we can uh, improve the fairing situation. I think I put it up in here somewhere. Too bad. So it's been about 10 minutes. There's still quite a bit of uh, well, hard to see, but still a lot of uh, lubricant in there. And uh, I have some. Some's made it down here. It's, it's a little bit wet. This is not 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 really moving. I can't really twist it because it's square. So I'm thinking. Oh, my voice just said something weird. Um, I think this might be a candidate for a little bit of heat. You know? would you like to retain this rubber so we should probably take the seat off you know yeah let's do that let's take let's take so I don't know, we'll try to pound on it we hit it a couple of times with the hammer let's try that first So it looks like uh, this is the uh, Comfort Model 2000. Uh, this, look what I noticed. See that? So there's some kind of spring, cushion in action. 
built into this seat mechanism, so it's not just a regular old seat. I don't know, I'm thinking we should probably... So I, I fought with this for a little bit. Unsuccessful at getting it out. Something screws into here. I don't know what that does, but I think we'll probably just leave good enough alone. Settle with our Comfort 2000 model. Yep, you agree? All right, good. Now I've noticed that uh, this cutout shape right here kind of like matches something in here that makes it kind of stay. So it's it's keyed, you know. Yeah. So I'll put the seat back on, line it up, and uh, leave it alone. Look into it a little deeper at some other time. So we're going to have to uh, get this um, kind of tucked away, but it has to be in a way that it doesn't get caught on the wheel and we have enough room to turn. You know? So it's maybe like up and out of the way here, like that. And then leave it kind of loose up there. I think that's the best way to go. So I'll lift it up like this. And then uh, zip tie like here. That way, all the slack will be up top, because we don't need any down low. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, there you go. Alright, so here, this is what we're going to do. I don't want to use regular gasoline in this under no condition whatsoever, right? Unless I really have to. So, I decided to use uh, this ethanol-free stuff. I can use ethanol-free gasoline if I can find it and mix it. But uh, that's, the, you, you know, there's like only specific gas stations that have it. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, the engine uses 25 to one, so it uses twice as much oil as is inside of this. 50 to 1 mix, right? And I guess I could just leave it 50 to 1. This is on, I didn't use any of it yet, and just add the amount of oil I need to this to have this actually pre mixed already as a whole can. You know? That's one way to, to go about this. Actually, I think that's might be what I should do. Other than that, let's say if you didn't have this already poured off, right? You can treat it like this, right? You can go, see, you know that for every 25 ounces, you have half an ounce of oil. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, right, if I poured this into here without um, doing anything else, if I want to make this into 25 to one, I need to double the amount of oil that's going to be in this. So treat this, think about this as like just regular gasoline. You would pour it into here up to 24, uh, 24 and a half ounces. And then you would pour half an ounce of this. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, you see, 25 ounces of gasoline in here, and then you put half an ounce of oil in here. And then that's going to give you the exact amount of ratio you need to make it 25 to 1. Got it? Yeah? <laughs> I feel like I tr confused myself and you a little bit. I'll get to try it again. So you take this, pour it into here, right? Get it all the way up to 25 ounces, which is like somewhere like right there. Then you would actually first pour this in. You want to pour in half an ounce of this. So it'll be like down there. And then you pour in 
24 and a half ounces into here of this stuff. And then that way you'll have a, a good mixture. And then you can use that. But I'm not sure. You know what? I don't know if I really want to... Because I do use this in my chainsaw. So you know what? Never mind. We're gonna we're actually gonna do we're gonna do that. So that was a little roundabout. So there we go. So I got some uh, oil, two cycle engine oil. So we're gonna do like half an ounce. So if we coat in the bottom, that's about half an ounce of oil. Right. And then we're going to add the fuel. I'm going to fill this up to 24 and a half ounces. That should give us 25 to 1 ratio of fuel to oil. So deep in the caverns, right, we got ourselves a wire we have to connect to this red wire here. I'm trying to get out of your way. Okay. So we need that there so we can ground it out. All right, so it's not the most elegant solution, but we got it right here. This is what we're working with. Got that zip tied together right there. I'm gonna turn it off. Just reach in right here. Touch the case like that. Now, that might work also, you know, but I'm not sure. Alright, so we got a screwdriver here so we can adjust the idle when needed, just double checking. Hopefully our kill switch will actually turn it off, otherwise we're going to be in for a situation. Yeah, that ought to be fun. Alright, so choke is on. Let's prime this. Got fuel flowing, that's a good thing. The carburetor's primed. Let's pull on it. Screw totally, totally turns that off. All right, we're good to go. 
Well, let's let's do this again. Start to choke off. Oops. Uh -huh. Let's try that again. Choke on. Let's turn the idle up a little bit. I should have adjusted this after the warm up when the truck was off. Prime it some more. Turn the idle up a little bit more. So I'm not sure what you can see, right? But I did find something else. Here is a low side adjuster, I assume. So we have low side and we have idle. So we should be able to dial it in with that screw right there. So we can run it in off. Yeah, think it'll work? I think so. Let's give it a try. Choke on.
little bit more. Okay. Let's try that. situation right that's as far as I can go to get this engine to run in uh, choke position that's off every time I go to like completely set it to off it just falls flat on its face it shuts right off right here's my theory the um, fuel flow is not enough I remember earlier I said the fuel filter doesn't matter I have a feeling the fuel filter that I placed in the tank is not exactly uh, allowing enough fuel to flow to keep this engine going. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the fuel filter and uh, run it without the fuel filter just to see what happens. What's up, Mama? How you doing? How's my little man? You doing all right? Uh, you, you guys going to play with me? Yeah, one of these days. All right. I hope so. Okay. All right. So we got a we got a. a uh, the lower hose is the one that has the uh, the fuel filter on it. So lower, I mean the one that's in the lower, closer to the ground grommet. So here we are. That's our fuel filter. We're gonna pull this off, right? Jam that in there. Running kind of low on fuel, so got to be very mindful of that. That's gonna affect things. So I'll probably have to mix up some more uh, 50 to, I mean 25 to one, just to like uh, get this to Sarah, so we can get a good testable sum. All right, here we go, cold start. I'm gonna test it, see what we got. Uh, it's just about as stable as a radioactive isotope. Okay, there we go. Choke off, all right? Climb it a little bit. Let it warm up for like thirty seconds. So maybe we had to adjust the air fuel mixture. Let's try that.
not working. Yeah. Okay, so I want to show you something about this engine. Okay, so obviously the shroud's off. Now, if you look right here, okay, you can see that it's wet. Right? And it's wet all the way around here, too. See that? It's wet. It's just a whole lot of top here. You can see it also. This cover here goes on top. You can see inside of there how wet that is. And it has a problem, right? That, for some odd reason, is letting a lot of fuel that's unburnt just kind of like flood the system. And it runs. Right? It'll run. But this carburetor, you have an idle adjustment here. And you only have this air fuel mixture here. There's no high or low. This limits how much you can dial this carburetor in. Now the issue I'm having with is it will not run with the choke off. So because it's always running with a little bit of choke on, it's just getting a lot of fuel. And this is an issue. So that might be a part of that. But I'm not sure why that is leaking so much from this gasket here. So, in general, this engine is failing me over and over again. I have, this is the second one I've replaced now, so I'm having problems, right? I can't get this to run and choke. I can't dial in the carburetor because this carburetor is limited. And I need to try to resolve this, and I can't resolve this. So, that's where I'm at. So you get it idling, right? And then you go to gas it. You can't because the air fuel mixture is not right anymore. So it's got no power. It just falls flat on its face. So that's the issue I'm having with this engine. Can't get it to work under no condition. I think my only solution would be to have a carburetor that I can adjust the high and low, but I don't know what carburetor fits on there that I can switch out. I think that might be the solution, but for now, I can't get this to work under no condition. No matter what I do to adjust the idle speed or the the air fuel mixture, which is only one, it's only one um, one screw for that. So it's screwing me over. <laughs> Sounds funny. That's screwing on. All right, thanks. Looks like somebody got kicked out. 